Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Brugly channel. I'm the guy who makes videos on the Brugly channel, and the name is Brugly. And in this video, I am bringing you this month's installment of the Fan Made Backrooms Level series. And you all did not disappoint. These are, I think, some of the best levels in this series so far, and I'm pretty excited for you all to see the ones I chose, because they're crazy. So, without further ado, go sub to my third channel, Spoogly, and then, let's get right into the vidya, shall we? First up for the video is called level 981, or False Tranquility. Level 981 is classified as a class dead zone because of a bunch of environmental dangers and an anomalous, powerful entity that lives here that I'll talk about in a second. The level itself looks pretty safe, actually, when you first get here. You'll see a nice scenic sidewalk that has cherry blossom trees on each side and fresh green grass as well. This path goes on forever in forward direction and the backwards direction, so you're just taking a nice stroll in this level. Right? Wrong. At the beginning, you'll think this level is safe, until you start to stay here for longer. Because once you stop looking at those pretty trees, you'll notice that you can't actually leave the path to get to the grass. So you're kind of stuck on this one sidewalk, and that there's an invisible barrier keeping you on this sidewalk. You'll also start to feel electricity in the air, and this electric field around you. And then after about 10 minutes of feeling that stuff, those cherry blossom trees will emit a toxin into the air that's extremely dangerous. When you breathe in this toxin, which you literally will have to, because you can't run away, you're stuck on the sidewalk, you'll start to notice a change in the level. A very dark change, you could say. It's pretty trees and grass in the sky will change to empty trees, dead grass, and a gray sky, and every alive thing from earlier will start to look decayed. The nice path you were on will turn into an old wooden plank path, and it's rotting and cracking and full of termites. After an hour of being exposed to this toxin and on this level, you'll start to get very, very paranoid about everything. The trees will start to look like they're moving around and walking and trying to grab you, and the pathway will look different too. And scariest of all, you'll start to see a figure dashing between trees on each side of the path. It's moving so fast that you really can't see what it is, but you kinda can, just not for sure. And this figure is called the Pestilence Keeper. Almost nothing is known about this entity's motives or about the entity in general, but what is known is that it's a pretty tall humanoid shape that has a huge swarm of bugs that make up the outside of its body. The entity is seemingly waiting for you to give up from all the paranoia and craziness that you're experiencing from this toxin, and to just lay down and stop moving so it can attack you. Now once this entity starts dashing around, everything in the level is starting to go pitch black. The ground is covered in tar and the grass isn't even there anymore, and the sky is brown and black, and everything is fully decomposed. And the Pestilence Keeper is slowly walking towards you as the level decomposes around you. Nice. There is no outpost here, obviously, and to enter this level, you have to fall asleep on level 39 under a cherry blossom tree, and to exit, well, good luck finding one. When you hop on the internet at your own house, your personal IP address is sent up into the cloud to whatever website you're on, and people or companies or spyware and whatever can literally see where you're at. They know you're there, which is why today's sponsor, NordVPN, comes in so clutch when it comes to protecting yourself online. When you use NordVPN, your personal IP is masked and it's hidden from all these malicious ads or spyware or hackers and whatnot. You can set your IP to pretty much anywhere you can think of by just selecting a country on the list. So if I go over here, and I click connect to the UK, everything online will think I'm from the UK. And the best part is NordVPN will protect you without even slowing down your internet or your gaming or your streaming services. So you can do all those things worry-free of malicious people and worry-free of lag. It's 2022, y'all. Everybody should be using a VPN and NordVPN is a great one to use. And if you want to support my channel, go to nordvpn.com forward slash and you'll get a 
massive discount on the two-year plan and you get four additional months completely free there's also no stress because you can try nord risk-free thanks to their 30-day money-back guarantee so check out nordvpn.com forward slash brugly to get protected thank you nordvpn for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it shall we Next up for the video is level 145230 from Miko Zero over on Discord. This level is also known as level Railway Runout, and it's classified as a class 3 difficulty, with it being unsafe and unsecure, with a pretty high entity count, honestly. The actual level is an infinite railroad with trains that run along it constantly. This railroad cuts through scenic wilderness, streams, hills, and valleys, and overall just dense forest. However, when you get to the level, you don't actually spawn on the train, you'll be in the wilderness near it, where all the entities are. The train itself is moving decently fast, but you can manage to get onto it if you grab a handle and just jump on, and then if you do that, you'll be safe from the entity hordes in the woods. The weather here is always cold and snowy, and the sun never fully rises. It's stuck at sunrise forever. And as I mentioned just now, the wilderness around the train is covered in creatures like hounds, smilers, skin givers, and other common ones in the back rooms. But you can avoid them by getting on the train. The entire level is infinite, and it seems that new wilderness keeps being made over and over again. It keeps being generated. The inside of the train looks like a cozy retro interior with tables and booths, and overall, it's pretty relaxing. It's kind of like the train from Polar Express. To enter this level, you can jump through a window on level 4, and to exit, you have to get on the train and make your way to the front to find the stopping emergency brake, and then if you pull it, you'll be sent out. But yeah, this one was a super liminal space type level. I really liked it, and I hope you did too. Next for the video is Level Heaven from Capitan Pavel. This level has a survival difficulty of zero and is safe and secure with no creatures. Level Heaven looks like an endless swirling maze of hallways and walls and roofs, all of them being made out of glass. The floor of the level is light gray and is the only thing that isn't actually glass. Since the walls and the ceilings are see-through, well, you can see outside, and what you'll see is a very relaxing, pretty sky. And in the sky, you'll see clouds and that kind of deal, and it's normally perfectly blue. There are not any entities in this level, it's just you and hundreds of miles of huge glass hallways looking out over an infinite sky pretty chill if you ask me. To enter this level, well this is when it gets tricky because you have to unalive. Which is actually why this place is called Heaven, because there is a small chance that you'll be sent here if you do unalive in the back rooms. Because no one really knows where a person goes if they kick the bucket in the back rooms. But it is known that being sent to this level, Heaven, is a possibility. To exit the level, you have to walk for miles and miles until you find a black door which will just randomly appear. Once you find that black door, you have to open it up and you'll be sent out of the level. Pretty neat, but I wouldn't try to unalive just to come here. And lastly for this video is Level Moon Beach from Izzy. Level Moon Beach is classified as a class 1 survival difficulty and is safe and secure and is pretty vibey. The level is split into a few different islands with one main one being the center of attention. And this main island is full of lush plants and sand and all of it is covered in different shades of blue. The sky in the level only has a moon in it. No stars, no clouds, just a moon. Which never moves and it never changes changes and it casts a blue glow onto everything below it. There's actually a few abandoned villages on some of the other islands that surround the main one, and the houses in those villages are made out of a stone called blue stone, which has never been found anywhere else except here. It's indestructible and it glows faintly blue, like all the other things here, and it's kind of worshipped by the entities that live here. There is one specific entity that worships them, and it's the only entity that lives here, and there is no name for this entity, but they're medium-sized humanoids that are bald and they wear rags, so kind of like a monk or something. These creatures seem to worship the blue moon in the sky, and they have this blue moon relic stone thing in their camps that they're very protective of. They kind of worship it and pretend like it's
like it's a god or something. Very interesting. They're pretty nice if you don't ag them on, you know, you don't want to rough them up or anything. But in passing, they're pretty chill. To enter this peaceful level, you have to find some objects that are shaped like a crescent moon on any other level and touch it and you'll be sent here. But yeah, that was a pretty peaceful level if I do say so myself. However, I don't really trust the cult that much. Anyways, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for the submissions on the Discord, everyone. I appreciate it. If you want to submit a level, go to Discord, go to the submissions tab, and do it yourself. You might get featured in a video. Check below for the links to Toogly and Spoogly, as well as anything else you need. Thank you for everything, and I'll see you later. Peace.